Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the seventh and final episode in a series of video tutorials on how to create a platform game in Unity 3D. Okay, so as I said, this is the uh, final episode that we'll be doing on this platform game. And realistically, with everything you've learned up to now, you can pretty much create um, your own platform game. There are just one or two things that um, I will show you in this episode, just to um, just to round everything up nicely. Okay, so first of all, uh, if we go over here in the Inspect pane, uh, make sure you're on Normal. Click here on Animations. And uh, let's see, we'll just play around with the animations just for a second. So when we press play, you'll notice mm, our animation plays there. So let's see if we can kind of stop that. So let's change element zero to idle and see if that does anything. Still no. So let's change every single one to idle. and see how that pans out. Let's untick play automatically just to be safe. So now we kind of float. Brilliant. <laughs> okay so tick play automatically again. Let's see if we have any... Okay so we just appear to be completely permanently running. We won't bother too much with that. Feel free to play around with the animations and see what you can do. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at now is keeping score on all our tokens. So, first things first. Game object and create empty. Uh, right click and we're going to rename this to score master. Now it doesn't actually matter whereabouts in uh, your scene it is as long as it's here in your hierarchy. Okay so over here click on the add component button, head to scripts and oh no we haven't written it yet so if we go to new script and we'll call this one gem score with a capital G and a capital S. And make sure your language here is JavaScript. And click Create and Add. Okay, so you'll see your script here is applied. Double click here to open your script. Let's wait for it to open. It opens up in Mono Develop as usual. The scripting language, the um, scripting program we've been using for the past couple of tutorials. So, when it's loaded up, I'll quickly explain a few things. So, as usual, delete the um, pre written script it gives you. And what we'll be doing in this script is um, creating um, some GUI. Now GUI is a graphical user interface. It is basically something which kind of overlays your screen. So when you actually press play, GUI appears over this screen. So back here. And what we're going to do, the first line, if you type static var and G score space colon int equals zero. Now I'll explain this line. If you put static here it means that this variable g score can be called within anywhere in the game and not just within this script. So var means variable. So here we're defining our first variable which is g score. And int equals zero means it's an integer and we're setting it to zero at the moment. So top and bottom, we've just made G-score equal to zero. Okay, let's go down. And function on GUI, and make sure it's a capital O and capital GUI. Open bracket, close bracket. 
and then open curly bracket. So next line down, we type in GUI in capitals dot label. Now what this is, is it means um, we want to create this GUI that we're going to specify now. So if you open bracket and type in rect, which means short for rectangle, at least I think it should be anyway. Okay, so now what we need to do is type in the location of where we want this score to appear. So um, I'm for ease and convenience, I'm just going to type in, um, I don't know, let's see, 10, uh, 10, uh, 120. And I'll close bracket, comma, and now open bracket and double quote. So now this is where we type in what we want our GUI to say. So we'll put in um, gems collected. Now you'll notice that here I put a colon and a space. So if I was to put this double colon to close it here, there would be no space between what we put next. So after this, space, add, and then G score. So if you remember, this G score we define here. And close bracket, close bracket, and then the semicolon to end the line. Next line down and then close curly bracket. So all we've done in this line is to find that at this location we want to display this text and then G score. So as G score is equal to zero at the moment, this line will appear at the top of our screen saying gems collected zero. Okay, so save this script, head back into Unity and press play. And it's not quite swaying as I would like. So what I'm going to do is make everywhere a little darker. So on our third person controller, sorry, not third person controller, in fact, no, we, we, we'll keep. I'm just trying to think what's the best way we can um, can tackle this. So when we press play, can't really see our score up here as the screen is a little too light. You saw it just for a split second then. So, what I will do is let's go to standard assets and skyboxes and what we could do with is changing our skybox so if you bear with me a second it's been a while since I've done the skybox okay so Oops. Normal and skybox just here. Okay, so I'm going to change it to moonshine and press play. So now everywhere is a little darker, and we can actually see our score a little better. And as you can see at the moment, it, it's not actually doing anything. So what we will do is let's head to our first gem. Let's go to red gem first of all. And in the script, we've got gem collect. Double click to open. Just taking a second to open. Okay, so if you remember correctly, a couple of uh, tutorials ago, we wrote function on trigger, blah, blah. So we destroy the game object, which means we pick it up. 
So down here, underneath the destroy game object, we type in gem score dot g score. If you remember, gem score is our script here. G score was our variable. And then put plus equals one semicolon. So what we're doing is every time we destroy a game object, every time this uh, script is called, we add one to G score in this script. So if you save that, head to Unity, and press play. Now, hopefully, if we collect our gem, it's still not working. Okay. So let's see why this isn't working. Let's go to our score master, to our gem score, and let's have a look here. Okay, let's try taking out this. Let's save and let's try pressing play again. Okay, so it doesn't display, which is fine. So let's undo and let's resave. Let's head back to Unity and press play. Okay, still doesn't appear to be working. So bear with me on this one. It's very, very strange. It should, um, it should actually be changing at the moment. Okay, so let's see. Let's try changing this um, to just gems. I, I do think it's because of this. We've set it a bit too short but let's try saving that heading to unity pressing play and there we go so you can see it's changing now okay so the reason that's happened is because of what we've set here so let's put gems collected back there and let's change this to 30 save the script and press play Okay, so it's still not quite working. Let's try changing this to, uh, let's see, 20. Save, and let's see how this appears. Okay, so it's still not working as we quite want. So what I'll do is I'll change that back to 10, and I'll now change this, as we know, this is the, uh, the problematic number, and we'll change this to 150 and change this back to 20 and let's save that script and now it will appear next to our gems collected like so so if you want your gems collected GUI to appear like that you keep this script as it is if you want your number to appear below gems collected best thing to do is if you change this to 40 and keep this number as 100. So let's save and press play again. And you can see gems collected, zero is on the second line down. So I'm going to keep mine like that, but you can have it whichever way you want. Changing the first two numbers places it on the screen. So this number here is X and this is y. So the higher this first number, the further along the screen it is. The higher this number, the further down the screen it is. Okay, so we've now set our score. So let's save. So we are gem collect um, script, which is applied on uh, our gems. So if we collect the red gem, we have that. Now it should work on our green gem, and it does. So every time you now collect a gem, it will add one to the score. Because if you remember, we added the ability to, in the script, 
after the uh, destroy line. Okay, so let's close Mono Develop and let's save our project. So the last thing now is to build the game. So if you go to File and Build Settings, you have a variation of different things you can actually build it for. So if you wanted, you could build it for the uh, Windows Store apps. However, you would need Windows 8 to do so. You also need to build the modules if you want to build it on PlayStation or on Xbox. Now, you can build it for different things. Uh, as I don't have an Android phone or an iOS phone, I have a Windows phone. Uh, I'm not able to show you to build these, but it is very, very simple to do. It is just a case of clicking on it and building. So for this instance, I'm going to do the PC version. And I'm going to click build and run. And I'm going to save this just as AAA.exe. You can save as whatever you like. So all we have to do now is wait for a Unity to build our entire game. And the final product that it builds is an exe file, which is uh, distributable. So once it runs, you have the option, and I'm going to do, uh, let's see, let's do 1280 by 720 windowed. And you can choose the graphics quality. I'll keep it as good for now and press play. And there we go. So if you were to distribute your game, this is now how it would look in the final product. So as you can see, I haven't actually built any more up here, as there was no need to. You can build however much you want. So that is it. That is um, the end of this final episode. Uh, we've learned many, many things along uh, the road on this tutorial. Hopefully it's given you a little bit of knowledge on how to build a game. And if I'm honest, I do hope to see uh, some of your projects in the future. So um, thank you very much for watching this series. Check out our other series if you want to. And I appreciate the time you spent watching. Thank you very much.